Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus. So the new build dropped about a day ago. I cannot wait to see what's in store. So without further ado, let's jump right into it, shall we? <clears throat> All right, in the character here. Quick save. Ahead of me is a small clearing lit up by the sun, and in the middle of it, there is a lone burning candle sticking out of the snow. Now this is really creepy. I look around, searching for Klaus, but I cannot see him anywhere. For a moment, I consider calling out to him, but then I would have to tell him that I was following him. Cautiously, I step into the meadow. It's eerily silent here. There's no wind at all. Everything seems... still. That's why I can very clearly hear a rustling sound behind me. I turn around, expecting to see Klaus there, but I don't know if that's him. Yeah, that's definitely him. Klaus, are you... Oh, shit. Suddenly from behind him, a huge shadowy figure emerges. Oh, God, it's Buff Werewolf Daddy. I have no idea what, my, what that might be. And I for sure don't want to stay around to find out. A sudden adrenaline rush hits me, and I don't even notice when I start running ahead of me. My fur is all bristled, and I can't count the times I was hit by a branch. But I'm back at the edge of the forest now. I can even see the I can even see the guest house between the trees. Looks like I was lucky enough to run roughly in the direction of the guest house. Otherwise, I would have gotten lost for sure. Okay, that was really stupid of me. I lean on a tree and pant loudly. I ran all the way to here, and I have trouble catching my breath now. I suddenly remember the shadowy figure I saw in the forest and shiver at the thought. I don't know what it was, and maybe it's better if it stays that way. My breathing finally returns to normal. I lean on the tree a while more before returning to the cozy guest house. I flop heavily onto one of the couches laying around in the lobby. They aren't very comfortable, but I know. How, but now I exhale with relief, feeling as if I'm lying on a cloud. My whole body feels heavy. The adrenaline high is going away, and I'm just starting to feel tired. It's hard to keep my eyes open. But before my eye, but before my eyes, I still see the hooded figure, and that towering silhouette behind him. Thankfully, now that I'm back inside the guest house, it doesn't seem that terrifying anymore. It probably was just Klaus playing a prank on me, because what else could that be? Until I open my eyes and see the same hooded head behind the window. I shoot up from the couch, frightened. I take out my phone from my pocket and take and make a photo of it. Only when I look up. Only when I look up, it's not there. Was I just imagining things? I think I almost fell asleep, so that's entirely possible. I feel groggy, and my limbs are weirdly unresponsive. I sit back on the sofa, looking at the patterns in the wood panels beneath my paws. They seem to shift just a little bit. Okay, I definitely need to calm down. Now that I think of it, it's a bit concerning. Maybe it was just a prank, but a student burning candles in the middle of the forest, clad in black robes, and that figure in the shadows, whatever, or probably rather whoever that was. What if it hurt him? I feel a wave of cold sweat on my back. This is a real possibility. Maybe I'm getting paranoid, but I'd rather stop thinking about it and talk about it with someone. Otherwise, I'll just get uncomfortable every time, every time I even look in the direction of the forest. I stand up and leave the lobby, walking towards Coach's room. I knock at the door three times. My knocking sounds unusually loud in the silent corridor, and maybe it's just the adrenaline in me affecting my perception. The door, almost, the door opens almost immediately, almost instantly, Coach standing behind them. Carvin, come in. I nod and enter the room, Coach closing the door after me. You're not looking good, Carvin. Are you feeling dizzy? Maybe you should lie down on the bed. I want to protest at first, but he is right. I do feel a bit dizzy. <laughs> Thank you. I sit down on the edge of the bed for now, feeling the soft mattress bend down underneath me. The coach in turn sits down on the chair, observing me carefully. What's wrong, Garvin? Did something happen? So, so it might be a bit hard to explain. Mostly because I'm not entirely sure what I saw. Coach only nods, waiting for me to continue. 
A after lunch, I went outside for a short walk to the forest. There, I bumped into that uh, weird student, uh, Klaus. He acted a bit suspiciously, but we've only chatted for a moment. It seemed like he was in a hurry. He went down. The, he went further down the path, and then s suddenly disappeared. In hindsight, I shouldn't have done this, but I found his paw prints in the snow and followed them. Curious. The paw prints led me to a meadow where a lone candle was burning, uh, sticking out from the snow. That was weird, but I didn't think much of it until I turned around and saw Klaus again, but standing there in black robes. That really freaked me out. And then I looked beside him, and there was some tall creature approaching him from behind. I've seen only its silhouette, but I, I don't know what it was, but I've just, I just ran the hell out of there. Thankfully, I was lucky enough to run in the direction of the guest house. And now I'm concerned if everything is okay with Klaus. So far, Coach only listened with an emotionless face. Now he stands up and furrows his brow. Yeah, you're really lucky. You don't want to get lost in this weather for sure. Snow could cover your track quickly. Something concerns me about your story, though. Look, don't think that I don't believe you, but I don't really know what to think of it. There's no such student as Klaus. Oh no! Oh no! We're quick saving! We're quick saving! Red alert! I blink in confusion. What? But I've seen him. I've, I've talked with him. I know what I saw. I'm not going crazy, am I? M maybe it's not his real name? What did he look like? A black cat with dyed hair, a bit shorter than me, wearing mostly black clothes. Devin looks outside the window and thinks intensely for a moment. No. There's no such student. And I haven't seen anyone looking like that on this camp. I lie down on the bed and close my eyes. Okay, now I feel really dizzy. I don't really know what... I don't really know what to tell you. Maybe you panicked and only thought you saw something? But even that doesn't explain this class you're talking about. If I may suggest something... Don't be concerned about it too much. Maybe it's some local kid playing tricks. That could be true. But where but where could he come from? If there's nothing beside this guest house here for a few good kilometers. Unless I'm wrong about that though. Nothing makes sense here. The only thing I can the only thing I do the only thing I could do to think of is to go there again and try to find him. Are you feeling a bit better? Not really, but I'll be fine. Maybe I just need a little walk. If that would help you, then sure. Sorry, I couldn't really help you. You helped me understand the situation a bit better. I better go now, though. Sure. Oh, and by the way, have you seen Rune, anyway? He disappeared somewhere after lunch. No, at least not since lunch. Ah, damn it. If you see him, tell him that I'm looking for him. Sure, will do. I bumped my head into the wall. What am I supposed to do now? Wait, of course! I saw Klaus in the cafeteria during lunch, too. He sat at the same table where Miko was sitting. And if I saw Klaus sitting down at Miko's table during lunch, then everyone sitting at the table had to see him, too. If they can confirm that, then at least I would know that I'm not going mad. Now I just need to find them. Cutie! <laughs> oh god, I'm so damn gay. Carvin! Hi there, what's up? Lake? He's definitely not the one I expected to see when I knocked on Miko's door. Yes? He looks at me expectantly. Is is Miko there? Oh, yes, of course, he's inside. It's his room, after all. Do you two know each other? Well, we just met a few minutes ago. He bumped into me in the corridor. He told me he was thinking of ideas for a track, and then he told me that he has some gear for composing here. Of course I had to see it. Oh, okay. That's great that you two have met, actually. Can I come in? Oh, sure. Yes, come in. I walk past him into the room. The whole floor is cluttered with a multitude of cables and boxes filled with blinking lights, chaotically scattered across the floor. The curtains are drawn and the lights are all turned off, giving the room a grimy feel. Just what I would expect from Miko. 
Carvin, what brings you here? Despite his smile, he seems somewhat tense, like he wouldn't be happy to see me. Did I interrupt something here? What were you two doing here? Nothing. Miko looks down at the floor. Okay, that's definitely suspicious. Miko was nice enough to explain to me what all those instruments and effects do. There's so many of them, and he seems to know them all so well. That's really impressive. Lake joins us, sitting on the edge of the bed. Miko says nothing and only and blushes only, but behind him his tail sways contentedly. So listen. Can you remember the weird cat with dyed hair who was, who was late for lunch? I think he joined our table. I think he joined your table, Miko. Hmm, I don't think I've seen him. Sorry. Maybe? I'm not sure. I was trying to come up with a melody for a track for most of the lunch. My legs feel like they can give out beneath me at any moment. I have to sit down on the bed next to Lake not to fall. Carvin? What's wrong? Lake cleans in and looks at me with concern. What a pure, gentle soul he is. I've seen him again in the forest when I was on a walk. He acted really suspiciously, and when I wasn't looking, he disappeared between the trees. I retell them the whole story. Lake looks at me with disbelief as I tell them about the creature and the brief visit in Coach's room. Carvin, that's a lot to process. You say? You say? That's like something straight out of a horror story. What are you going to do now? I think I need to go back there, into the forest, and look for that meadow again. Maybe I'll find him there. That doesn't sound very safe, Carvin. I'll go with you then. Bad things happen in horrors only if you split up, right? You have no idea how much I would appreciate that, Lake. You can't imagine how freaked out I am now. Thanks for thinking. Thanks for not thinking I'm nuts, by the way. Well, that's what friends are for, right? I'll go back to my room and tell Jorgen I'm going out. I'll be back in just a moment. Alright, guys, that's where I'm going to pause it. Oh, man, it's really heating up. Werewolf, go Werewolf ghost daddies and... Ghost cats with dyed hair. Okay, sure, why not? And I'm pretty sure that the coach might be in a relationship with Rune. Inappropriateness. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that little notification bell. Until the next time, I love you all. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.